And so in the middle of the night, about a hundred of us or so saddled up, which means put on your gear, your canteens and your rucksack and your ammo and grab your weapon. And we walked for two or three hours through the Vietnam dark. And we encircled the village. It was called a cordon, where you'd put a, three platoons and circle the village. And the fourth platoon was outside the village along a paddy dike. And the idea was that full, full light that the three platoons would sweep through the village and push the enemy out of the village into this rice paddy. And the fourth platoon, my own, would gun them down out in this open paddy. At full light, uh, three Viet Cong figures came out of this village. They were as far away as, I don't know, 10 yards, 15. You couldn't see their features because it wasn't light enough, but you could see their silhouettes very clearly against a kind of purple background of the coming dawn. And we opened up with everything we had. And 10 minutes later or 15 minutes later, when uh, it was light enough, uh, we found one dead Viet Cong soldier. I will never know whether that dead body out there was killed by a bullet from my weapon. However, I was there and I pulled the trigger, so I can't avoid responsibility for that. It was like a 16-year-old kid. I mean, it was a young, young, I mean, kid with a mom and a dad and sisters and brothers, presumably, and maybe a girlfriend, who knows. He was dead. As I could have been dead the next day or the day before. Um, a human being. And so I have been haunted by a sense of responsibility. And it's true I was a soldier and true I'd, I'd gone. I could have said no. And so I wake up at night thinking, am I responsible for that person's death? And the answer has to be, yeah, I am.